Hi guys. I know I haven't made a video in a while. I have actually been away. Um, but also I've, I've kind of lacked the, the uh, inclination and the time to go through Final Cut kind of piece by piece. Which I would like to do, but I might do it sort of in, in bits or, you know, not really on a regular basis. Just because I've got other channels and I've got, you know, I've got other things I could be doing. Like wasting my time on stick cam. <laughs> But um, I will continue these, but I want this channel more to be like answering questions that you guys have more specifically. It's kind of easier for me and, and you know, it's more pointed. And that way, if some of the same questions come up twice, I can sort of refer people to a video that I've already made, which is going to be very handy. Anyway, I'll get started today. Um, we've had an email from Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy, if you're watching. Um, who's asked about audio and working with audio in Final Cut uh, with different clips. He's got different clips from different locations. Of course the sound levels are different and he'd like to match them up and, and have them work coherently within a clip. Now again I'm no expert and um, if anyone else knows better ways to do what I'm trying to explain here uh, feel free yeah, tell me because I'd certainly like to know. Um, but I will explain to you, Jeremy, how I do it and and work with audio in this way. Okay, the first thing we do when w before working with our audio is go down to this button here, which is our Clip Overlays button. And you click on that, you'll see that this little red line appears. This is basically just your audio level in terms of volume of decibels. Now, your decibels is just on zero as a, as, as a default. And you'll see that this is channels 1 and 2 of your audio, if you've recorded in stereo here, like me. Uh, that will just, you can see that one just mimics the other, so just worry about the one. And uh, that will that will change on both channels in the same way, unless you want to do otherwise, which I can't imagine. Anyway, uh, so just drag that, get an idea of how loud you want your clip. If if zero is is too loud and it's distorting, just bring it down a bit, bring it just slightly, um, and and you can sort of match your audio up just roughly in your your main levels by doing that, and just listening to your clips. Now, if you want to get more technical than that, and uh, bring your audio down at a certain point in the clip and then back up again, perhaps, uh, what we use is the pen tool, which is this tool down here. You click on that, and you'll see that when you hover over with your cursor this pen will pen icon will appear and you can just click down and that will create what's called keyframes and these keyframes these little dots that appear you can make as many as you want as many as uh, that is practical and uh, we want to bring the audio say at this point we want to bring it down and we can sort of gradually bring it down we just drag those keyframes that we've just made click and drag to various positions. We don't quite need this many, but this is just an example. And uh, and then uh, we'll say bring it to negative 40, and then we'll, we'll bring it back up at this point, so we'll make a few more. And we'll bring the audio back up to zero decibels, say. So this is our, this is what's going on with our audio for whatever reason. And now that we've found that we've put too many keyframes in, we can always just click and hold on this tool you can see there's a pen with a positive which is what we were doing which was placing these and a pen with a negative which is to remove them you can see that I can just remove them there now that's one way of doing it the other way the much easier way I think is to just control click on your keyframes and hit clear and that will clear them off it's a nice easy way to do it holding down the option key will do the same th will essentially do the same thing. As always, there's about 10 ways to do any given thing, uh, which is handy because you can kind of nut things out yourself a lot of the time. Anyway, I'll put these keyframes back and I'll render this so I can show you that this has actually made a difference to our sound. Alright, I'm just going to run this so you can see how the audio dips down and up again, just as a basic... Everything is strictly necessary. Web 2.0 harnesses the stupidity of crowds as well as its wisdom. Some of the comments on YouTube make you weep for the future, but humanity is the repellent one. Never mind the obscenity and the naked hatred. 
End quote. It's time for the next step. Okay, so that sort of hopefully that gives you an idea of at least the tools involved uh, with working with your audio. I'll get rid of those now. Uh, another way you can work more accurately with your audio, this is sort of the cheap and nasty way. Uh, another way is to just double click on your audio clip and it will show up in here and there you can play with your levels there and you can you can also put your use your pen tool up here in the same way as you could in the timeline and as you can see in the timeline whatever you're doing is reflected so you can adjust it in both areas let's have a look Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll turn that on so you can see. I was wondering what was going on there. Yeah, so what it, wh whatever I do here is obviously the same as here. Uh, but the handy thing here is you can see your waveforms, so it's a little easier to work with. Um, but yeah, sort of your preference. I, I, I do it the cheap and nasty way myself, because I'm not too, you know, I don't need to be that accurate with it. But yeah, up to you. Lots of ways to work. Um, if you're worried about noise and things like that, I know Jeremy that you mentioned you had some scenes were sort of sounding different than others or louder and softer. Uh, there's filters that you can use and just uh, to apply them, just go here, effects menu, sorry, and uh, audio transitions are there as well, crossfade and so on. Uh, audio filters you'll find down here, and you can you can add any of those, reverb or whatever you like obviously to change the nature of your sound harm remover have a play with that and they'll just appear in here once you've double clicked the clip they'll appear in your filters tab here and you, you can adjust the parameters of those and have a play with that there's a lot you can do uh, but that's the basics of it and hopefully you've gotten something out of this and yeah hope good luck with it and um, just have, have a bit of a fiddle around it's all I've ever done. I've never learned, actually learned Final Cut. I've just come in here and and uh, played with these things really, and and read a little bit of the manual, which is always tedious. So um, yeah, good luck and take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one of these that I do. Cheers.